Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and this is the fifth video in a series for new Alexa developers who are also new to Node.js. And in this video, we're going to be talking about writing asynchronous functions using promises and the async and await keyword. This video maybe should have come after the first video, or maybe the first video should have come before this video, but uh, anyway, the first video, we talked about um, writing asynchronous functions using callbacks. And callbacks are a super important concept to understand when you're working in JavaScript. And that's why I wanted to cover that first. But they're also important when you're looking at how promises work because um, you can create code that is asynchronous or uh, manages asynchronous operations in a few different ways with JavaScript. This isn't uncommon. I mean, it's uh, with most languages, there's more than one way to do any one thing. Um, but if you're looking at code that is out there in GitHub, trying to understand how to create Alexa skills based on examples, it can be confusing if you don't understand um, different ways of, uh, of writing asynchronous functions. And, and most stuff in Alexa, all stuff that you're going to do in, in uh, Alexa for the most part is going to be uh, asynchronous. So let me revisit callbacks first. And this is the example that we uh, we had in uh, the first video. And this is a simple function where um, I'm passing in a callback to the say something function. And uh, I'm simulating a, a long operation here with this timeout. And it's waiting a second before it returns. And then down here, um, I'm calling the function, passing in a, and, and this, these arrow functions here, I, I need to write a video to cover, or write a video to create a video to cover this too. Um, but for right now, uh, I'm calling the function here, passing in uh, another function, and then uh, getting the result back. And so um, there it is. And this, this is pretty easy to follow. And if you've just got one asynchronous operation, callbacks are easy to, to, to follow. It's not, not all that complex. Where it gets complex is when you've got more complex logic. So for example, let's pretend that we have three different asynchronous operations that we need to perform. And the, maybe the second one depends on the first one and the third one depends on the second one. So maybe we're calling an API and we need the results from the first API to call the second API and we need the results from the second API to call the third API, as an example. Let me show you how that starts looking when you're writing that logic using callbacks. And this is, I'm not gonna spend the time typing this out because it's not a good use of time for the video. So I'm gonna just copy and paste it in here. So. In, uh, in this example here, I've got three, uh, three operations. I've got first thing, second thing, and, and third thing. And I just really simplified this. I don't have any logic in here that is, uh, you know, if this doesn't succeed, then do this. And that would be really common in a real world scenario. And you can see even without that, how complex this starts looking really soon. So I've just got three things going on in here. Imagine if I had 15 things. And just to talk through this, so uh, this first function um, can't finish up until the second function finishes up. And the second function can't finish up until the third thing finishes up. So in each case, I've got to pass the data from the, uh, the, the I, guess I'll, I guess the parent function, um, I've got to pass the callback in after it completes to call the second function or the subsequent function. And so it, it starts forming this kind of uh, Christmas tree looking thing. If I had 30 of these, this could go way out here. And there's, uh, there's code patterns that um, make this more readable and, and a little bit more user friendly, but it's still pretty tough to stay on top of. And that's where promises come in. So promises are another way of managing asynchronous uh, code or writing asynchronous code. And they're objects, a promise is an object, it's a JavaScript object that is going to, um, kind of like the name implies, it's, it's, it's always gonna return, but it's, it's gonna return a promise of a result or an error. Let me show you what it looks like and uh, hopefully looking at it, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Well, that's hard to follow. So um, again, I'm gonna just 
paste in some code that I did earlier and talk through it. So in, in this example here, I've got the scenario that I am trying to do here with callbacks, only this time I'm doing it with, uh, with promises. And so I've got three different functions. I've got first thing, second thing, third thing. And I, I wrote those functions separately. They're not nested, any of that. They're just standalone um, functions. But each one of these functions, rather than taking a callback in, is going to return a promise object. And the promise object takes in a, uh, a callback. And that callback is going to have two parameters, resolve and reject. And these um, are going to indicate success or failure when it happens for that promise. Let me show you how it works. So now if I wanted to do um, my call the first one, then call the second one, then call the third one, the, uh, the, the chaining, and I'm gonna get, actually these I wanna talk about a little bit later. So let me comment those out for right now. Um, here's how I would uh, here's how I would do that. I would call the the first thing, the, the first function, and then use this then method to uh, call the to indicate that after that finishes up or gets a result, then call the the second thing, and I'm passing in the results of the first thing into the second thing, and then when that finishes up, I'm calling the third thing. These are my functions up here. And then when everything finishes up, I'm going to uh, write back the results from whichever one of those uh, things is the last thing, which in this example is the third thing. And so I'm gonna write out the result third thing, unless there's an error somewhere in this, this, uh, the, this chain of functions. And if there's an error, then I'm going to write out the error. And the, the examples that I'm using here, uh, each one of these functions is going to sometimes return success and sometimes return uh, an error. So I've just got some, some pseudo mock code to, to do that. So like half the time, each one of these functions is going to return success. Half the time, it's going to return error. So I should be able to, with this code, um, example two, See, so now uh, the first function failed. So up here, this was what's called. And so I didn't see my success and I caught that failure here. Run it again. The third function failed. Third function failed. Second function failed. First function failed. Ah, now we get one that actually succeeded. So in this case, now I've got result three, which is the last thing that should have been run here. Okay, so hopefully you can see that promises are a whole lot easier to follow than callbacks, especially when you're doing something uh, more complex. But you also have a third option, and this is the most recent option and uh, intended to make even using promises uh, a little simpler. So let's take a look at option number three. And option number three is using the async and await keywords that are available. I think it's with node seven and later, maybe eight and later. Anyway, it's, um, you can use async and await keywords if you're using AWS Lambda for your Alexa skills with Lambda version uh, 8.10, I think is the, the one that Lambda supports. That's the version that will um, also allow you to use the async and await keyword. Let me show you uh, an example of what this looks like. And I'm gonna use my, the same functions that I had in my second example. So I've got, first thing, second thing, and third thing. And they're still gonna be uh, returning a promise. So, so the async and await keyword is really just syntax stuff. So you're still working with promises. It's just how you write the code to work with the promises is uh, a lot cleaner and it looks more like um, just procedural code, like uh, um, synchronous, non-asynchronous, synchronous code. So I could do um, something like this here. The, the async uh, keyword is going to follow the function that is gonna use asynchronous functions within it. And the, the await keyword is used 
to basically um, tell the, uh, the, the parent function to, to hold off on returning until these things are done. So in, in this example here, um, I'm gonna be calling all three of these different uh, first thing, second thing, third thing methods that I wrote, and then uh, returning done when I finish up here. The, the other cool thing about using the, uh, the async is I can use um, try and catch. So if I get an error in any one of these three, these, uh, three functions up here, I'm gonna catch that error down here and then write out the error. So, it, so this is like a lot cleaner if you compare this to, uh, to this here. So let's, um, let's run it and, uh, and take a look. What do we have an example? And so now I had my first method fail, first method fail, second method fail, first method fail, first method fail. Come on, success there. I've got a successful one. So you can see um, still using promises, like I said, just a cleaner way of writing the code to, uh, to work with those functions. That is it for this video. There's a whole lot more I could talk about on this topic, but I wanted to just, like I said, um, get uh, give you an overview. Maybe one more thing here that I skipped over um, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, back on promises, there's... Um, so the, the example that I showed you, the first example, was running uh, a sequence of methods. So uh, method one, method two, method three. Um, when you're writing skills, there's probably, not probably, there's also going to be cases where you just need to run everything in parallel. So maybe you don't care about the result until you've got the results for all of them back. So maybe you're calling three or four different APIs, and once you get the data from all four of those, you can use it to um, uh, build your, your speech output that you're going to use for your, um, for your intent code. Uh, in that case, you can use uh, the all method of the promise object. So you can go promise all, and then you pass in a, uh, uh, an array of the individual functions that are going to be executed in parallel. And these all have to return a promise for this to work. So um, I've, we've done that in ours. So I've got first thing, second thing, and third thing. And then when they're all done, we'll just write back um, all done. So node able to and there you can see that so pretty pretty simple and then let me show you the last example that I wanted to show you that I skipped over is uh, this this example here the other um, common case is going to be maybe you need to call multiple APIs and you really don't care uh, which one gives you the value you just want the first one to return so what's a, an example of where, um, so I've got like one skill that looks up the, uh, the current price of Bitcoin, for example, and I might make a call to multiple um, APIs that can provide that. And I really don't care uh, which one responds with the answer. I just want it to happen fast. So the first one that responds wins. And if, uh, if that's what you need, then there's a race method. So promise race that allows you to do the same thing as promise all. You can pass in an array of the individual methods that are gonna return a promise and then uh, return whichever one comes first. So we'll um, run this and the first one wins. I'm just writing back. So as soon as something returns, it, it's done. This is kind of a hard example to, to see with the functions that I used, but I think you get the idea. So that is it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, um, please let me know and I'll respond to those just as soon as I can. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like the video and subscribe to the Dabble Lab channel. Thanks so much.